name is Lucas English with uh, English Racing, and we're here today with uh, Daniel Spaulding's um, 2003 uh, Lance Revolution. This is a uh, pretty cool car to do because it was pretty much a ground up build uh, with our 2.2 liter uh, long rod motor, it still uses the factory 2 liter block. Um, it has the uh, extreme turbo system, 6466 twin scroll turbo kit. Um, we're running on a set of fuel injector clinic, FIC uh, 2150s. Um, we're running the Spartec uh, Pro 14 sequential um, ignition system. And this car is a true flex fuel car, and that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. Is um, <clears throat> This is using the new AEM EMS Series 2. Anyway, they've now made with the new firmware release, it's completely flex fuel compatible. It uses a GM flex fuel sensor. And uh, to me, that's really exciting. I've been doing E85 for uh, probably six or seven years now. And you always have the, uh, you know, you have your ethanol tune and your gas tune. And, you know, loading the two is kind of a pain in the butt. And so you'll you get to where you don't want to drive your car sometimes. There's just not enough gas stations here in Washington State. And uh, so just the inconvenience of it. So with the flex fuel, you can run a E30, E40. I mean, it just doesn't matter. You can straight gasoline. Um, the beauty of this system with the computer, which I'll be showing later, is I can uh, really get aggressive with the tune soon. So by like my E30 or E40, uh, we can be making a substantial amount more horsepower than we were on uh, pump gas. So let's uh, go, I kind of wanted to show the features of the ECU and then we're going to kind of, right now I have the car on straight pump gas and I'm just going to make the pull there and we're going to just start pouring ethanol in and with no changes to the laptop, we'll be able to see the horsepower and the tune just uh, take care of itself. And of course I've done all the tuning to make it do that. And, uh, Thank you. All right, so here we are in the uh, AEM Series 2, uh, the newest firmware that has the uh, flex fuel capability. I'm pretty excited. I feel that they did the flex fuel exactly how I would have dreamed of doing flex fuel. There's a lot of different ways companies do it as far as having your base fuel map and then you just have you know, ignition add and fuel add and boost trims off of. But what AEM has done is they've actually made two so you basically, like right here is our main fuel map, which would be for gasoline. And then we have a flex fuel fuel map. So basically what you would do is you would do your gasoline tune, then you would do your ethanol tune, so two separates. And then you just have this table here that um, goes between the two maps. And as of right now on the fuel, it's a straight line, but if I wanted it, let's say 45%, I could make it favor, um, more of the ethanol map or the gas map as necessary. So you do have the ability to, uh, you know, in the mid-range to trim between the two maps. Um, if everything's right though, I feel that this table should stay linear and, and just how it is. Um, so where it gets a little bit fun here is we can go into, so we have our normal ignition maps. This is my gasoline ignition map. And then we can kind of come over here, we go to so then we have our um, flex ignition map. So this is our higher timing for the ethanol. So what I've done here though, is now here's that same table, just like that we had for the fuel, um, by, e, by, e third, by E25, I'm starting to add in, I'm getting more aggressive and getting towards my flex fuel ignition map. So, this car right now um, on straight pump gas is a 10 to 1 motor, so I'm really I'm trying to keep it pretty conservative. But by E30, uh, we go from 480 to uh, 580 horsepower. And then by E40, we're almost up to 700. Um, so we got the uh, flex ignition blend. And then we come into our, kind of the same thing, the same exact thing for the boost. Um, so we come down here, I do my boost on the AEM versus vehicle speed. Oh, here we go. advanced boost. So currently on pump gas, I'm targeting 20 pounds, and which is right there. And then on um, straight E, 
85 or closer to you. We do E98 around here, so one of my game plans for this car is to even have E85, let's say, be close to 800 horse, and then if he puts it on E98, it'll take it to that next level. So right now we're targeting 40 pounds and uh, for the straight E98, and then here's that table again. So by E30, I'm, you know, I've jumped this map substantially higher to get the boost up quicker. And then uh, I kind of keep the boost there the same, and then by E75, we're almost all in, and then E85, we're all in. So they also have the same deal for, which is this what I've been playing with the most here, because this has a set of GSC S3 cams, so they can be a little interesting to uh, get to start as good as you'd like. Um, so we have our normal start map here, with coolant temp enrichment. Um, and warm up enrichment, and then we go to flex start. And so, then here's that same uh, ignition crank I found on the ethanol. I really just when it's cold out, even they still don't start the best, but I get better results by cranking the initial cold pulse way up for starting. And, um, and then the warm up enrichment, you have a separate table which is pretty close. As you can see right here, then it's the same um, blend table uh, for the starting also. Also in the Series 2, this car I wish I'd have got time to hooked up. It's pretty exciting. Is They have um, uh, fail safes, which this is the first, uh, you know, Series 1 never had this. And then, so engine safety, they call it. Uh, currently, the only feature I'm using is the um, O2. So if the, basically if the car goes lean under power, so I've set the values, so you know, over 4,000, over 50% throttle, and then it has to be lean for more than a half a second before it'll um, turn on the ignition cut. And so I've kind of set it up to where at, uh, you know, at 12 pounds, I'd let it be a 14.0. I don't feel that hurt a motor at that level um, from my experience. But by 20 pounds of boost, if this car goes leaner than a 12.9, um, air fuel is going to shut the ignition off. They also have uh, that same table for oil pressure we can set up to where at certain RPM levels, if the oil pressure drops below a certain point, it can shut the ignition off. You can also set outputs um, that can control different things, you know, to shut the car off completely if you want. Um, most people, the fuel pressure one here would be our most exciting, um, which I don't have set up on this. I, I feel the O2 will do the same job, but this is also another way to do a, a fail safe. So that's kind of our uh, rundown here in the Series 2, so let's uh, start making pulls and see. The only other thing I guess if you guys want to look at, um, on Daniel's car he bought his Ertronics gauge, so right here you can see it says E11, um, but that is not necessary. It just There's three wires on the GM flex fuel sensor, one's 12 volts, one's ground, and one's a signal, and the AEM takes that raw signal, so this is just... Um, the AEM and Nestletronics are sharing the same signal, so really there is no output from that gauge to the computer. Um, this gauge does have a zero to five output, but um, the AEM doesn't recognize that. It uses the um, actual um, GM flex fuel frequency. So this is just more for Daniel to know uh, for his own curiosity, so he's gonna have to hook the laptop up. Um, but if you do look here, you can see the, let's just go flex boost. Um, so the flex fuel content, the AEM says 12%, that says 11%, so they're right there. Um, the other thing that this, the flex fuel sensor is in the return line, so they have the ability to um, basically anything over 50% throttle, <clears throat> it will ignore the flex fuel sensor. Um, that's because if you're running out of fuel pressure and you pretty much have no fuel in the return line, then you can get a, a fluctuation in the sensor. So you'd want to, uh, you wouldn't want that at wide open. So. And uh, all right, that's my tutorial on the area.
So these are the, uh, this is going from E10 straight pump gas to uh, E30. So we went from 481 to 581. Uh, we're still only at 24 pounds. So this combo just makes really impressive power per pound. Right now it's still coming in, so we're, we're at E33. Our next pull, I'm going to try to have it at E40. about E43, I know it says E45. So going from E43, from E30, E43 got us another 100 horsepower. Now we're at 33 pounds. I'd also like to show, I'm doing a first gear for speed. You can see right after I get a little pull in the fourth gear, the car is right back to 640, so this car has a really nice power band. Spalding's car. Uh, we were doing the flex fuel. So pretty much you kind of see I got the four horsepowers laid up there from today. And um, so on straight pump gas we're doing uh, 481. On E30 it's 581. And the 678's between around E50, E40. So then I have the car set up pretty much from E40 to E70. And then um, above E70, then it starts to climb, uh, you know, the boost and timing starts to climb. So basically the 781's on E80, uh, E85, this car would be over 800 horse. Um, as you can see, the air fuel's in the car, about 11, the, the uh, dyno wide band's about a half point leaner, but uh, pretty dang rock solid, straight from pump gas to ethanol, uh, no fuel changes in ECU, just uh, all flex fuel.